Stu says you don't know. You're live. All right. We're live. Hello. How's it going? Good evening, everybody. Um, hope you're well tonight. Um, everybody who got a chance to watch the video, we hope you enjoyed it. Um, we had a lot of fun making it. Um, yeah, so we were super pumped to, to release it. So, yeah. So we'll just wait a couple minutes and yeah. see if anybody... Give a few, give a few minutes and comes on. see who shows up. If it shows up, if not, that's okay. <laughs> well, it looks like there is one person that just showed up. Oh, perfect. There we go. Yeah, right in the thing there. Well, hello. Hey, Welcome back, Car Life. <laughs> good to see you again. Well, good to see you in the chat there. Okay, so this is the album. Yeah, it goes backwards from the camera. Yeah. And we didn't have any technical difficulties this week. We made sure to get that <laughs> landscape going. Yep. Well, we plan. I, it was so funny because um, tonight, yeah. about half hour ago, I was just like, oh, did we get the thing set up? And she goes, yeah, I got it all ready to go and I'm good to go. <laughs> um, I did check out Sloan this week. I, I don't know how they passed through my radar after all these years. It was it was so good to have such a the kind of, like a 60s vibe like for a band that's from the like did most of their their stuff in the 90s and the early 2000s um their their stuff's really good but has a very kind of 60s sound to it which i really enjoyed so definitely gonna be listening to to more of them for sure i listened to a couple of the albums you recommended lighting difficulties this week <laughs> well it's because he said that. <laughs> Yeah, it was so good. I was because I wasn't sure what to expect either um, going into it because uh, I somebody had told me about them before a long time ago and I just kind of heard about them in passing, um, but never really took the time to actually go and listen to them. And they had such a unique sound, especially for the time that they were releasing music. Um, so I, I'm definitely looking forward to getting in, getting into more of their music and kind of listening to uh, to what they put out over the years. Maybe even might have have some future videos involved in it, but. I don't know. I'll have to listen to this more and kind of see if I can get any get any ideas for videos. But at any rate, I really enjoyed listening to it. So thank you for for recommending it to recommending it to us. It's fantastic. So, but yeah. So welcome back. Um, we are a couple minutes in. So I guess we'll kind of get uh, kind of give a, a update as to what's uh, what's going to be going on with the channel in the future. Um, obviously we've talked about, we're going to be doing these some 41 videos for the next. You just keep talking. I'm just uh, straightening the, this out. Okay. <laughs> for the next, uh, <laughs> month and a half. Um, so until the end of March when they release their final one. Um, but then after that, I have decided on what I'm going to do. Um, I'm not sure when I'm going to actually announce what I'm doing. It is going to be a history piece that will hopefully span over a, a few weeks of video. Um, but I started on that this week, uh, to get that all kickstarted for the for the next uh, round of stuff also um over the year each month i'm going to be releasing album of the month for the previous month so um that'll be coming up for for january because i've i've picked that out and i'm i'm working on doing a, a small video probably like a, a midweek release or something um on on the shorter side so that's kind of what's coming up on the channel well, yeah and then my plan is i wanted to because in the summertime i was doing like the little movie music shorts but I actually, I'd like to turn that into like a full length series because I ended up stopping because there were so many soundtracks that I would get into. And I was like, I can't turn this into a short because there's just too much to get into. <laughs> so yeah, and especially when I would like, because one of the ones that I was um, really wanting to do was the original Spider-Man uh, soundtrack. And so it was like, I, I was starting with that. And then it was like, you know, with Guardians of the Galaxy and like some of the Marvel stuff. And I was like, I could do like series within a series with this. So I don't know when I'll get that up and running with, you know, life crazy. But that is the thing that, that that's like my after this, that's my next focus. Oh, <laughs> that's cool. I heard some 41 on the radio today. <laughs> I love it when that happens. It trips me out every time because the for me, it's, it, it's strange hearing something so familiar come on um, because of how much I've listened to them over the years that when it, when they do show up on the radio, it's just like, all right, excellent. That's awesome. So that's cool. Yeah, because the where I grew up, they they didn't really play a whole lot. They didn't play much Sum 41 where I grew up. There was really the majority of radio channels where I uh, where I grew up 
was they had hip hop channels, they had classic <laughs> rock channels and oldie stations. That was that was the radio <laughs> stations where I, where I grew up. There was some kind of there was some I guess I don't know. They played some of the top 40s and stuff like that i guess like that sort of deal um but so i mean occasionally most of the kind of i guess punk rock and rock scene really kind of got overlooked where i was at um but yeah and i'm i don't know that may have just been too because i i didn't really listen to a whole lot of radio um when i when i was a kid i listened to the oldie station which is why i love a lot of old music but I remember when I was young and one of the things that we do is I can't remember which radio station it was, but um, I mean, you know, just like the, I guess it, it now would be like classic nineties, right? Like, you know, pop rock, whatever, but they have these things where, um, oh, shoot, what was the name of it? Um, anyways, it was when like the, the new Beatle had come out, like not the band, but the car. And they would do these things where we, you would have to, it was like a scavenger hunt. And so we'd be in the car with our parents and they'd like, you know, you'd have to go to these different places and find the clues. And that's where I think my main radio exposure came to <laughs> as a kid was from that because you wanted to listen to the clues. Then we'd have to go to the different locations. It was so much fun. And I can't remember what that was called. I, um, oh, I'm not sure. They crazy. didn't have that where I was at. It, well, no, it was the, specific to the Toronto station. The uh, I think the most terrifying thing I find about radio Hello is to the new person. Hello, the Timbit see. Gang. I hope so. I can't <laughs> see the name from here. I don't have my glasses on. <laughs> I can get up close. The Timbit Gang. I'm, I'm actually looking at the computer screen. We're good. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think one of the most terrifying things about radio stations now is when we were kids, the radio stations that were the oldies stations the music that they would have been playing now would have been the equivalent of playing '90s music at this point which because yeah. they were playing 60s and 70s so now the oldies is the 80s and 90s when you compare like the year difference of that time so like the late 90s early 2000s they were playing 60s and 70s as oldies and now i even remember the last scary. time i listened to the radio i so for a period of time my um I didn't really, I listened to a little bit of radio for a while because the, um, yeah, I know, my, car, that's weird. my car thing broke. Um, and so I had to listen to the radio because I had no other way of listening to music. So, <laughs> but luckily where we live, there's a good rock station. So, so. one day the 2024 music is going to be old. That's what I said that to you and what not you. <laughs> oh, that's terrifying. <laughs> but radio in 19 weeks. Yeah, I so it's funny thing you saying that you use your your Bluetooth on your phone. So my car doesn't have a Bluetooth, but I didn't. I so I never bought like one of the FM transmitters because I thought you had to plug into your phone, plug into the transmitter, and then one of my buddies was like, "No, no, no, they make them with Bluetooth now." <laughs> Apparently, I'm behind the times. So finally, I bought one of those because the amount of like auxiliary cables I went through over the years is insane. So yeah, I use a I use an FM transmitter now that's Bluetooth like that has the bluetooth so i'm able to actually connect that way because i had so many times where my it would just break down i'd be stuck without music and i felt like that song uh car radio by 21 pilots <laughs> that's how it feels because it's like oh it's quiet what am i gonna do so i would throw on the radio uh, well on that note what was the last oh that's oh, cool i've what? yeah i've wanted to i've Oh, Someday when we get a vehicle, cool. I want to get something like that because it's, it's such a good idea. Yeah. Well, remember when there was like the satellite radio in cars? Like when that was yeah. more when we were kids. That was like the, the, the well, thing. Well, now it's more common. Well, I know a lot of, from what I've heard, a lot of people who have a satellite radio, they cancel their subscription and then satellite forgets to actually cancel their subscription. <laughs> so they don't mean. pay for it anymore, but then they get free satellite radio. <laughs> <laughs> I use a mix of Bluetooth and CarPlay. Sorry, I'm having such a. I should I should have my glasses on so I can. I wonder if there's a way to make that chat so tiny. I wonder if there's a way to make that bigger. I don't know. Maybe you keep talking. Me keep talking. Okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> I was gonna say on that note, what was the last thing you listened to on Spotify? If you guys or whatever the last song that you guys listened to on your whichever streaming service streaming service you use. And I was gonna ask you too. Pull it up. What was the last? What's the last thing you have? I only use the free trial. <laughs> Yeah, a buddy of mine only used the free trial too because he's just like, I'm not paying for that. Um, I don't think there's a way to make it bigger. It's fine. There's not a way to make it yeah. bigger. Okay. Yeah, I like yeah. Spotify too. Sorry, you go ahead. 
Oh yeah, no, I was just oh. agreeing. That, I like yeah, Spotify I... too because the so early on when streaming was becoming more of a viable option, um, I had tried Apple. I had my the first streaming I had ever used was Deezer actually because I'd come across it and I was like, oh, oh. what something something's going yeah. on with our computer. <laughs> um i had come across it i was like oh this is cool and then there's like you have to pay for it. i was like oh okay never mind um anyway so i had tried deezer i had tried um uh, apple music spotify like i had done all the streaming services and i found for myself spotify for the music like the library that they have the ease of use and things of that i found it to be the the easiest um so yeah i 100 percent agree that um spotify is the best what's your last played on spotify <laughs> try to apple music for a bit because i love apple and have everything apple like airpod yeah i wanted to do i wanted to like apple too but i always had problems with the downloading option yeah no i find spotify especially because like i'm not like a super techie person so i just spotify is like so straightforward <laughs> for me so that's why i like it so my previous spotify the very last one was looking at you by mc5 because we were just talking <laughs> be before we went live we were talking about wayne kramer uh who just passed away <laughs> mine's, two, um, mine's the two worlds reprise by phil collins because <laughs> <laughs> i was i was talking to the kids about the um well, because I was showing them the little clips in the video. I don't know if you watched our video tonight, but there's a Phil Collins thing. And so, and I was showing them the music from Tarzan. Ah. And so that's where that came from. Well, and just before my MC5, I had Sloan. I was playing Sloan and Motorhead. Okay, <laughs> so those are my last three. Okay. We will see you in a little bit then. <laughs> cool. All right. Awesome. So... Tom Sawyer by Rush, I think. Oh, that's a that's a good song. That actually, that song actually came up recently. Um, what was I listening to? Uh, oh, I was listening to the Rockstar Dad Show um, with uh, Jarrett uh, Jarrett Reddick from Bowling for Soup, oh. and they were talking about um, who are they talking to? They're talking to Chris Demakes from um, Less Than Jake, and they were talking about that song specifically because Chris had just recently gone through the Rush discography, listening to the first song on all of their records to hear kind of the progression of their albums. And they were talking about how so many people like drummers will talk about the song Tom Sawyer by Rush and how that's kind of like the go-to song that people are like, oh yeah, I know that song, um, which is cool. So it's just, it's just neat that that showed it, up. just not by, cause I'm so bad with song I meant names. To go back, I meant to go back and listen to it because it being <laughs> Rush, the, for a long time, my nickname at one of my work places I worked was Rush. And so people would always be like, oh, Rush. Is that after the band? I'm like, no, 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 it's not. That's not. They're a good band, but that's not what it's after. <laughs> um, it's just us now. Um, cool. So, sweet. Well, one of the other things that I was going to ask you, well, I was going to ask for anybody listening is that what is do you have a song or a band or an album that you like but you wouldn't necessarily want to tell people what it is a song or a band i have to think about this one actually like something that's like unexpected not necessarily like embarrassed but just like unexpected guilty pleasure oh. Welcome back. <laughs> yeah, do yeah. you have a guilt? Yeah, do you have a guilty pleasure? Because I, it's, it's so funny. Because I thought of this the other day, and there was something that came up where I was just like, "Oh yeah, that's my guilty pleasure," and I don't remember <laughs> what it was. I'd have to think about it again. Um, but uh, Car Life, what's what's yours? Oh, welcome back to the game, Weezer. I love Weezer. That's your. That's your. That's uh, your guilty pleasure, Weezer. See, I don't have a problem admitting that I like Weezer. I though. like Weezer. They are odd and they're quirky <laughs> and different, which is awesome. Um, but yeah, I like I like Weezer. I don't know. People make fun of it. Oh, really? Really? I wonder if it's. Uh, I don't know, because Weezer's not. I don't know. They've they're a whole different um, ball game than than what they they used to be. To 
isn't that bad of real estate. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I first heard of Weezer when I was in a, um, a local theater club as a kid and the older kids, they always had like Weezer band shirts and stuff. And so that's actually when I first heard of the band, but then the first song that I ever heard from them was Beverly Hills, which is like probably yeah. a good chunk of people like our age and yeah. into Weezer. They're te think. technically they're nerd rock too. They're, they are oh, considered thanks. in the subgenre <laughs> of nerd rock. Um, but no, I like Weezer. The, they're definitely very different from what they, they used to be. And I think a big part of that is just because Rivers Cuomo has so much music. I, if I remember correctly, I believe he actually has a website out where he released a ton of his music for free because he just had so many songs that he it was too much for him to be able to put out. But a lot of it wasn't like Weezer stuff, um, like Weezer style music. So he just ended up putting it out there, I think, during the pandemic, if I remember correctly. I think one of the weird things what, the, other, the other day, remember, you were listening to, I don't even remember who it was, but I got in the car and my brain just thought it was Weezer. And I was like, I've never heard this before. And then I was like, wait, this doesn't sound like oh. him. Who, what, what band was that? Uh, it was the new Green Day album I was listening to. Checking that out because I was yeah. I was it, what didn't sound like Green Day. I was planning to do a review on it, but it didn't it didn't come to fruition. <laughs> well, yet yet, but yeah. I may still I might still do it. I might still do it. Still a lot going There's still on. time. Excuse me. Excuse me. Um, Are you yeah, answer new... the question though? Which one? Which question? <laughs> the yeah. question I asked. Oh, the guilty pleasure. <laughs> yeah. I still have to think about it. Hold on. Let me look through my you you. You Maybe. tell your you tell your guilty pleasure while I look through and see if what. Oh well, well, that's not how this is supposed to work. I don't know what my okay. guilty pleasure would be. I, would, <laughs> I don't even think I want to admit uh, this. <laughs> Mine would be Miley Cyrus's newer stuff, probably, which is weird to say out loud because that's not something that I think, you know. Aside, I mean, you know that I've listened to a little bit yeah. of it, but. Yeah. So I don't know if this would necessarily be a guilty pleasure per se, um, but it's an it's an artist that I I'm still kind of figuring out how I feel about them. Um, Mod Sun, I I really enjoy his voice. A lot of his his vocals do sound kind of the same, I guess. Um, but he puts out some some pretty good music, and I don't know if I would call it a guilty pleasure. It's more so I have like he has such a like an interesting vibe to him. Um, that I haven't really figured out how I feel about him. Um, but he's very much a chameleon. Recently, um, I've seen some of uh, his, like, if you look at his early stuff, he looked very, like, bohemian in in a certain way, in a very odd way. And then he completely changed his look and just recently changed his look again. But in a way to where I'm not really, I, I'm not really sure what he's about. Um, he seems like a very nice down-to-earth guy. Um, but as far as I know, like from what I've seen, that's, that's about it. But I, yeah, he's not really a guilty pleasure. It's just, I'm, I'm unsure how I feel about him. So I don't know how he's kind of viewed in regards to if I'm ever like, oh yeah, I listen to Mod Sun and people are like, I don't know if that's like, a, oh yeah, good. Or like, a, Ooh. what would be your like comfort food of music? If that makes sense. Like something that's just like, you know metal it's comforting it's familiar no 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 like specifically it can't just be like a random thing like there's one thing that no matter how many times you listen to it's gonna be like ah oh that's on 41 100 everything <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's no way around that um i actually one of my, my most comforting artists actually in that regards is nf um and i think because especially like when it comes to comfort like if, if I'm looking for comfort in music, I'm probably in a rather low space, I guess. And his music, because he he's, because he speaks to, um, because he speaks to like a lot of the negative side and some of the mental struggles he's gone through over the years. I think his music is really helpful in that regards. Um, but generally speaking, usually it comp like, it's very interesting to me, like metal music, just in general, like early two thousands, like heavy metal is really comforting in in a very strange sense if i'm in a very kind of off mood or i'm angry or i'm upset for whatever reason if i put on metal it it from that era it really brightens my day and puts me in a mood of oh yeah i forgot how much i really in, enjoy this so bands bands like in flames and disturbed and stuff like that um who just just really have good good hard music um from that from that time period so that's that's kind of 
the other, I guess, comforting music for me. I think mine would probably be Jack Johnson in Between Dreams, that album. That's like... That's his best album, I think, personally. Well, and it's just, it's such like a happy place too, because it's like, it reminds me, you know, it's just like, it's like summertime, right? So it's warm, it's happy. I love Sum 41. <laughs> yeah, that's why, sorry, that's why I said that while you were talking, because I saw that comment come up. It wasn't because I was like being rude or ignoring you. <laughs> yes, he loves Sum 41. But... Uh, makes me sad whenever I'm just like, yeah, Sum 41. People are like, who? I'm like, no. Oh, <laughs> let me share them with you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah, I think for me, and especially um, with, uh, sorry, I'm like staying on what I was saying, but then I lost track of what I was saying. Well, she finds track. Comment comment what your, uh, what your comfort music yeah. is. What's your mac and cheese of... I mean, not that that's my comfort food, but that's like the one thing that people think of. But grilled, like, of grilled, music, I mean, grilled, <laughs> not food. Grilled I mean, cheese is my comfort food, food. We can talk about food too. But. Grilled cheese. <laughs> I love grilled cheese. <laughs> TV oh, I've never grilled. heard of them. Oh. Yeah, I, got, I, I got more music to listen to this week. My glasses are filthy. TV grand. Oh, I'm going to write that down so I don't forget. Um, excuse me. Cool. I feel like a little granny, like putting these on, and I'm like, eh. <laughs> so style TV girl. What? Uh, yeah, I haven't heard them. I feel like I'm at that age now where I want, like, I try to find new music that I haven't come across before. And then there's so many new artists out there that when I talk to people that I work with, where I'm just like, oh, what do you listen to? And they tell me, I'm just like, ah, I don't know who that is. Um, TV girl band. I'll have to listen and see what they're what they're about. So I'll check some out this week. I mean, I had a good, um, this last week, uh, Car Life put me on to uh, Sloan, which I'm really pumped about because their their music is really good. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Lover's Rock is their most popular. Okay, cool. That'll be good Good to know to check out. That's the other thing too. Sometimes it's hard when there's an artist to know kind of where to start um, with with their music. Okay, so they've been around since 2014 about, it looks like. Cool. Um, but yeah, it's, it's hard a lot of times to kind of figure out where to start. Um, so usually what I do, if I come across an artist for whatever, a lot of times Instagram, as I'm going through, I get a lot of recommendations. So if I get a recommendation for an artist, I'll go to their Spotify and I'll, I'll check their top five, or I'll look at what their top albums are. And then I'll listen to one of those. Um, if it's one that I just come across randomly, if somebody recommends one to me, I'll just be like, Oh, what should I listen to first? And then they give me a heads up as to what to, to check out. And this this screen is so like narrow that I keep like sitting over to the side. <laughs> I had a question that another question that I was going to ask and I didn't write it down so now I can't remember what it was. Oh, um, well this week. So I guess that's our homework for this week too is to come <laughs> come up with some good questions for next week for the live. Um, okay. Is there ever, is there any maybe album or song from a band that you, a band that normally you might like, but when you heard the song, you were just like, oh my gosh, this is like the worst thing ever. Sorry, say that again. Like, is there a song that maybe from a band that you might like or appreciate, yeah. but when you heard it, it was just like, this song is just terrible but normally they're like good um, or just any bands in general that you just heard and were like, this is just not good. I'm sure there are. There's not any that I can think off the top of my head. Alien band. An alien from Mars comes to earth. What is the first song? An alien from Mars comes to Earth. What is the first song ah. that you show them? Oh, that's a good. That's, <laughs> that's a, a good, good question. Oh, I like that. <laughs> oh, how do you pick that? Oh, um, oh I hmm. guess there's a lot of ways you could take that. Um, well, yeah, because it's like, do you show them something that's fun, or do you so show them something that shows incredible, like musicality? Um, you show them Psalm 41, of course. <laughs> <laughs> no, so because then I um, think it's like, you know, obviously, like, if you think of a lot of, like, cl 
classical pieces, right? Like, I know I probably wouldn't show them that, but I might show them the Lord of the Rings soundtrack. I think, and this is kind of my go-to song when people talk about when, when somebody asks the question, uh, when the question comes up, what is one song that is just flawless to front the back that is just perfect? My opinion of that is Hallowed, Hallowed Be Thy Name by Iron Maiden. That song to me is one of the greatest songs of all time. Personally, I really love that song. Um, I, so I'd say I, I would probably pick that one. Um, Alien comes down. <laughs> <laughs> Play me music. All right, I got this for you. Check this out. Um, yeah, how would be the name? That's a, that's a good. I think that's. I think that's the full title. I always say it wrong. I'm pretty sure. Um, now I gotta. There's a. Hold on. I gotta look. Yeah, up how a, would be the name? Yeah. The uh, that's that's to, to me up. that's such a good song. And um, the band Brown Brigade does a really good cover of it as well. Um, it's different from it's it's. I wouldn't say it's not as good as the original uh, because they do a really good job with it. But the original Iron Maiden version is just perfect. Um, Purple and Black by The Burning Tree. Oh, I've heard of The Burning Tree. I love Muse. I was really a fan. Of, I actually did a I did a review of their uh, most recent album um, on the er, when I was doing earlier when I first kind of started doing music reviews. So <laughs> it's not as polished as some of my other stuff, I guess. Well, especially too, when Stephanie does our editing, it's a lot more polished. Well, that that was the one where somebody had commented like they thought that the album was cheesy. Yeah. Because they didn't get, they didn't get, I guess, well, what they were trying to. There was a lot of references to it. Yeah, like it was very, um, it, it wasn't subtle. Oh, it was very much in the face. All yeah. Right, burning tree. Sorry, I'm just trying to um, back on the Alien to Mars thing. I'm still trying. There's a specific song I'm thinking in my head, and I can't remember um, the name of it. So it's just going to take <laughs> a second. I'm not sure if I know the Burning Tree, but I've heard their name. It's very familiar. There, There's a guy that I know who's put me on to some um, really good music. Um and I feel I feel that he's mentioned them because it's extremely familiar. Um, hold on, I'm just looking up to see. I want to put that. Oh, Burning Tree. There we go. Yeah, it's one. Uh, it is. It's what? Yeah, it's the Burning Tree. It's the space Burning Tree. Maybe it's a different one. It sounds so familiar, though. Um, but I'm definitely going to listen to that one. Purple and Black. All right. I'm adding that to my listen to this week all right yeah so oh one of the the i wonder i actually i might be mixing it up i think the artist he put me on to was the porcupine tree <laughs> it still had tree in the name but i think i think that's who it was was uh the porcupine tree that's who i'm mixing it up with um but i'm definitely gonna go check them out yeah i have them here purple and black by the burning tree form the debut oh good i'm gonna have to listen to that um if you if you ever had a chance to that's a, that's an artist the porcupine tree not the porcupine it's just called porcupine tree um, I just uh, somebody that I know just put me onto them probably a couple months ago um, and they they were a lot of fun so I'm gonna definitely check out the burning tree I wanna I just wrote that down so cool yeah it does sound so that's why I was I the part where the tree I was just like ah it sounds I'm pretty sure I've heard well it. you kept saying burning tree and I kept picking hanging tree from Hunger Games, oh, Hunger Games. <laughs> yeah that's true cool this is awesome you know what the, I, the thing I really enjoyed about last week's live and this week's live it's given given me a lot of music to check out especially to like it's so hard sometimes when looking through like you look through posts and stuff like that um, but it's different when somebody actually is like, oh, hey, this is good. Check this out. Right. Because you can come across so many different recommendations. Um, but it's it's different when it's more of, I guess, one on one, one on two kind of situation where it's like, oh, yeah, check this out. Um, because it's then I'm more actually check it out, because if I come across it just randomly where it's like, oh, yeah, I'll check out that band in this type of scenario. It's actually like, all right. Write it down because I want to check that out because I want to I want to know know about it. So. Okay, how about covers that you like better than the originals? Oh. <laughs> I have a covers playlist. <laughs> so, um, I have a Spotify 
and it's the same name, Critically Disdained, and I do a lot of playlists. I have a lot of playlists there. Um, and I have a covers playlist there, actually. Um, and I, off the top of my head, I can't think of a cover song that I like better than the original, but I know there is one. Um, How about, uh, see, this is, this is hard for me too, though, because all, so many of the songs from across the universe were done so well. Mm -hmm. And I'd probably say like, those have got to be some of my favorite covers. I like kiss me the newfound glory version of kiss me better than the sixpence on the richer version. Yeah. But the sixpence on the richer version ver, ver, version was not great. Yeah. <laughs> I guess that's true too. That was like epitome of nineties. Oh, but that was so good. Like there was a lot of good, um, Happy weirdness. <laughs> I don't Five know. finger death punches cover of house of the rising sun was good. Um, obviously you can't beat the original on that one. It's just, it's just very different, but it's, it's done really well. Um, I don't know. I, there's not really one that I'd say, I guess if you look into the punk goes pop albums, a lot of those punk covers of those punk, but oh. punk covers of those pop songs are a lot better than the original in, in my personal opinion. Have you heard that version? Which one? It's uh, a Capernia Weezer. cover too. So. So. Oh, I'm gonna have to listen to that. No, because I love that song too. Yeah. I haven't heard that cover. Um, I, I like picture the remember. the across the universe version of All My Loving better. Oh, really? Better yes. than the Beatles version? Yes. Oh, because it, I mean, his voice is better, but then also I like there's the one that she sings too that I like better than the original. I can't remember which one it is. Okay, that's fair. I actually, the Across the Universe version um, is uh, Dear Prudence. I love the Dear Prudence yeah, version. Yeah, that's it's good, really, too. It's really good. I mean, they're, they're all really good. If you haven't seen Across the Universe, and you, end, and you <laughs> the, the soundtrack's <laughs> definitely worth checking it out. Um, Just listen to the soundtrack. The movie itself, I we were thoroughly confused. However, okay, so there's this one scene. I'm not going to give it away, but the scene where they do the song for um, let it be the, yeah. it was in my opinion, one of the most powerful scenes in cinema history. It was absolutely amazing. I, it had me in absolute I forgot tears. About that. If that part was, was so good. Like, and I don't want to give away because it, it takes away from the power of it, but that part was just, I was not anticipating it. And mm -hmm. it was in my opinion, probably if not one of the most powerful, Sorry, if not the most powerful, one of the most powerful moments in movie yeah. history. It was absolutely amazing, that that scene. We love the Beatles, too. Like, our whole family. <laughs> the amount of documentaries and things. Just, just things and, we've consumed the, about the, the Beatles. The consumption. <laughs> yeah, it's just so yeah. much. Um, just because they were they That's were so why good, we like, watched that movie. Because it was like, oh, Beatles. And it was like, no. They took the soundtrack... <laughs> from across the universe and did um the, did the movie from the from the yesterday movie and crossed them it would have been, been so, it yeah. would have been amazing yeah because the the music was so much better from across the universe but yeah. the story from yesterday was like it was very quirky and unique and cute and yeah, it, was it was good, good. well that's another thing okay so music in mu music that was music before it was a movie like for instance like mamma mia right like you have that is there it was music before i don't no, know no no sorry i'm thinking <laughs> okay let me try this again movies based off of albums or music i don't know a whole lot i think no we but think about it we've actually we've we've over the years we've we've seen quite a a, a few different things that have not necessarily like redone per se but that are heavily focused on music current music like i don't mean okay like i'm gonna bring up lord of the rings again obviously that has its own soundtrack it doesn't have yeah. pop call pop 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 culture influence in it yeah whereas something like back to the future right is heavily heavily revolves around guardians of the galaxy you know, the music, soundtrack is the music times so like or things like mamma mia right that whole story was and i honestly i 
I just I gotta say I don't know why people love that movie so much. I didn't like it. Um, like ABBA is classic. The music is fantastic, but th- those movies were just garbage, like just <laughs> utter trash. And I, sorry if I offended anybody, but like it was just not yeah, good. Yeah, I like musicals. I didn't like that one. Yeah, no, tick, I love musicals. Tick Tick Boom though was really I really enjoyed yeah. that one. That was the soundtrack on that was really good, and the movie was fantastic. That was good. But yeah, so movies, pop, pop culture. I'm having such a hard time phrasing what I am trying to phrase. Um, dang it, there was a that I had thought of that we had watched. Like move, like music wise. Yeah, it was like a few. Years, never mind. I'll just I'll I'll try to get this. Quick break away from the music for a second. How's the lag this week? Is it is laggy? Is it like is it keeping up to speed? Are we behind a little bit? How is it better? Um, Carla, if you were here last week, is it, can you tell if the um, if the lag is better than it was last week? No big lag. Oh, great, excellent. That's good because <laughs> last, last week the lag was so bad. Yeah. <laughs> um, That's good. Awesome. There we go. I just okay. added Calpurnia. See, I can't read list. without my glasses, but then I like, but when I put them on, then it's like reflection. Thankfully, really I can bad. read without my There's a... glasses. There's less of a delay, but I think it kind of bit choppy. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Well, our cam, like our camera is not like super high quality. Yeah. We're hoping this year to upgrade some of our equipment <laughs> so that way we can actually do better, have a bit better. And we should probably increase our internet speed a little bit. Maybe. I don't know. I, I think the internet speed is probably it's just fine. Our, just it's our just equipment. This, <laughs> this stuff is garbage. But nothing too noticeable. <laughs> awesome. That's fantastic. Good. Cool. The, <laughs> the part we always have time with, especially like when we're doing our recordings for our videos, is the lighting. The lighting is always the biggest challenge. Um, because the the lighting is it's it, it always washes us uh, washes us out. Um, and it's hard to get that that good lighting without us looking like ghosts. It's easier to set it up with the phone, but with like the laptop and all of this stuff, it's mm-hmm. there's not really a good place to put it. It'd be nice. It'd be nice to be able to record in natural sunlight because I found that's what yeah. seems to work best. But timing that is a nightmare. Um, yeah, you even time that? I don't even know. <laughs> I have no idea. <sighs> What were we talking about before? Well, sort of movie soundtracks. I mean, like, because we were talking about the, we talked about Across the Universe and the covers mm-hmm. and that. And then I said that Mamma Mia was trash. <laughs> yeah. I hope we don't lose any subscribers for that one. I have a feeling the people that watch our channel probably aren't big Mamma Mia fans. We are in Canada um, to answer your question there. I can see it. You can you can read that. Read go Canada, go. Yeah. The yeah yeah. He's not originally from here though. Yeah, he's I, a foreigner. <laughs> I am from <laughs> California originally. Yeah. Um, Hence the little thing like oh, on, cool. our, on our logo. We, we got another on on ter- ah, Ontario in this week. That's okay. awesome. Yeah. We're not too far. So from I'm starting to think that YouTube is like only putting this out to people in Ontario. You know what? <laughs> As getting people and people close by, that's awesome. Yeah, because last week uh we'll ham- get together someday. Hamburger guy. That was uh, hamburger man. The hamburger man yeah. was was from Toronto, <laughs> I think. If I remember yeah. correctly. That's awesome. Well, it's well, yeah. it's cool too, because I'll it's meet like up at a concert someday. <laughs> like like I don't know if like I know, a lot of times it's it, it seems cool when people are like, "Oh yeah, like they're from Japan or Germany or whatever." And it's like, yeah, like it's cool to meet people online from across the way. But I don't know. I think when it's close by, it makes it more <laughs> it makes it more local. <laughs> uh, <laughs> when when people are close by, it's not. I don't know if more personal, but it's I don't no, know. I it's, it's, a, it's a different feel, and it's it's really cool to know that there's people close by and nearby yeah. that um, watch our channel, which is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I remember. Him. Yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. So yeah, so the uh, the couple of lives we've had, we Ontario, go Ontario, yeah. we're awesome. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Um, 
my brain is because I had thought of something and then we started talking about the Ontario thing and then I got sidetracked again. I'm surprised you guys. Oh, thank you. Oh, we appreciate that. If you know anybody that might be interested, <laughs> let them know. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, I, I had started the channel, um, year and a half, almost two years ago now, I guess. Um, and it was kind of something that I was trying to get started and find time to do. And it, it was really challenging. I hadn't really, I had kind of had an idea of what I wanted to do. So I had an initial plan laid out of what my goal with the channel was. Um, and it just, I, I have all these ideas and big plans and more, I usually bite off more than I can chew. So I had all these grand ideas. And so eventually I had to kind of dwindle, dwindle it down. And then when new, not new funk, what am I talking about? Um, walk off the earth. When walk off the earth released their last album, uh, Steph, I wanted, I would have loved to have Stephanie on the channel, but she's busy and I didn't want to be like, Hey, stop what you're doing and join me on the channel. <laughs> But she offered. So uh, she was like, hey, how would you feel about me joining you on the review for Walk Off the Earth? And I was just like, that's awesome. That'd be fantastic. So it Especially was, we had just seen them live. Yeah. Too. And it was originally going to be a one off. So she was going to join me. And then she's like, well, maybe I'll do it every once in a while. And then I asked her, like, do you want to like be on the channel more often? And she's like, yeah, sure. So we started kind of building it together from that point. Um, so it's 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 really started to take off, uh, at least compared to what we <laughs> what we had for sure. Um, so yeah, we're definitely looking for more people to to join the channel, and um, we're gonna try to be more consistent with releasing our videos Saturday nights and then doing a live afterwards um, to to really be able to just reach out and to the community, like our 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 channel community. <laughs> um and be able to chat with the, the people that watch our channel because that's that's really important to us right in the very beginning every time i get a subscriber i i i single watch so anytime <laughs> anytime i look at the at our analytics and stuff like that i always see oh we've gone up one yeah. or even if we just lose one it's like ah oh, no somebody off the channel which i mean a lot of times it could be bots or whatever but like it's it's very important to me that on our channel that as we bring people in that we're making something that they'll enjoy. Um, because for me, uh, two things I love is music and coffee. And they're things I love sharing with people. And I love it when people share things, uh, uh, share music with me, which which I appreciate you guys doing down in the comments, which is awesome. Um, so yeah, so that's the kind of the, the hope of our channel is to really be able to have that connection with people. Um, and as close as we can, like it, as it builds up, it'll be, I know it'll be a lot harder, but we wanna be able to try as much as we can to keep that piece of it with the channel. So all that to say, <laughs> thank you. We appreciate yeah. that. And yeah, if you, if you, any of your friends uh, might be interested, let them know and we'd be more than happy to let them uh, have them be a part of, of the channel community for sure. I think part, you, you kind of missed part of how initially this started though, because like for years we will like endlessly discuss things like to a ridiculous level. Okay. Like whether it's, you know, music stuff or mm -hmm. getting too deep into like the Marvel movies and whatever and like all the theories. And so we would actually just a lot of the times, you know, late, you know, late at night, we're just like, you know, sitting around just talking about this stuff. And it would often be like, oh, we should start a podcast kind of thing. And it was just that was kind of, I guess, where the seed was, right? Like for years of just, you know, like doing this because like we like listening to people talk about, you know, you, you, well, talk about anything really um and so just like taking that and then you know initially i didn't want to have anything to do with being on online you know online because i i'm a pretty private person and i also just i hate being on camera um like you know i like i i used to do like stage acting and that's fine but i hate being recorded so that was kind of my hesitancy there but like he's so much better with like being out there with like you know in front of people and communicating to people and so I was just like, you know what? Like, I, th I think you can do this. And then, yeah. And then, so I decided to join him after Walk Off the Earth because I just thought, you know what? Maybe, maybe we should just do this. But initially, yeah, that's, I guess, like the whole, like uh, he was the brainchild of the channel, obviously. But The, cha <laughs> the channel actually started because I, I had intended on doing something else because we were driving. Away. Since I was a kid, I've made CD mixes and stuff like that. LimeWire <laughs> and things of that nature um, where I would get all these CDs, like all these different artists and things, and then make mix mixtapes and stuff like that to listen to. And which ended up 
when streaming became a, a thing, um, I started making playlists. And so we were driving in the car one day and I was just like, I wish there was a play way that I could monetize playlists. And then a few weeks later, I was like, I wonder if there is. So I Googled it and you can. The challenge with that is though, you is you have to build a following first. Um, and so I started doing that. I'd started TikTok and Instagram, these different things where I was trying to bring in followers um, to those different mediums to be able to build that following to get people to start listening to playlists so I could start kind of that avenue. And then as I was thinking about it, um, there's a, uh, I listened to a podcast called the ongoing history of new music. Um, and it's the main guy is a guy called Alan Cross. He was also Canadian. Yeah. He was a DJ in Toronto for years. Um, and this is kind of his main thing now is that that piece of history. And I was like, well, I really like music history. I wonder if I could do something kind of like that. Um, so I started, uh, I started the YouTube channel because I was like, oh, you know what? Maybe I could do it this way and then I can share playlists and whatnot. And as I had started the channel, I wanted it to be music news, album reviews, history. And I had a broad, like I said before, I had a kind of a broad more idea in that regard. Rock. More focused on rock was the main point. But as it went on, we did the walk off the earth and there were a few other, uh, we did a quick little blip about the, one of the Miley Cyrus songs that was released. So I kind of, we rebranded the channel when Stephanie came on to be more about just music in general. There's certain music that we're probably just won't really touch because it seems that the people who are coming into our channel are more geared towards kind of just like rock music and a little bit of hip hop here and there. Um, but mostly kind of just like, um, I guess millennial type music would be the best way to put it. Seems to be the main draw to our channel um and oldies and classic rock and stuff like that so there is Lots still of Beatles. yeah <laughs> there there is a heavy focus on the rock side of things still but that's not the main focus we're open to doing other types of music as well mm -hmm. um and then this kind of became the main thing because i realized i really enjoy this it's a lot of fun um and it's a way that i'm able to share with people i i really one of my passions in life is to be able to improve people's life and to be able to share things to help people just have a better day. And music is one of the ways that I, I do that is like sharing music. Um, so that's kind of kind of the idea behind the channel. That was the evolution of where it came from to what it is now. I talk a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that's good though. <laughs> balances out the you know my brain dead silence <laughs> so but yeah so this is kind of this is kind of the the um the future of us we're hoping so this is the plan um to be able to to do to do this channel so and this has been really fun last week was our, we had done a live before um when we hit a thousand subscribers um and uh, we had some friends and family that came out onto the live which was awesome um, this the last week and this week, I think were the first lives that we actually had people join that weren't uh, like already friends and family. Yeah. So it's, it was really cool. It was cool. Last week, car life was here last yeah. week. Um, and it was, it's, it's really neat. It's a fun experience. And I, I really enjoy this piece of it. Once we get used a little bit more comfortable doing the live piece, it's a little weird at first, especially mm -hmm. with the, um, like the, uh, the silences from time to time because maybe we're unsure kind of what to say on on this side um but i think as we get more comfortable and we're more familiar with it it'll it'll continue to be even more fun but yeah. so far we've really enjoyed it and i mean i i found i came across i was introduced to new band this last week and i got more to listen to this week which is awesome so yeah. and i just thought of something while you were saying that and then my my trains of thoughts today just keep like mm -hmm. zhi, zhi. <laughs> Um, okay, so hold on. This is going to take me a second. You can keep talking if you want to. Okay. Um, I can do that. Um, oh, we're in the new year. I have to, I'm actually going to be hopefully this year, um, updating some of my playlists, actually. Um, the, I don't really have any that are going to be lining up with the plans for the channel, like for the videos that we're going to be releasing. Um, we're going to be finishing up the Sum 41 series, like I said before. Um, and then at the end of March, beginning of April, I'm going to start a new history series, which will probably like the videos themselves will probably mainly be me, or I may get Stephanie in on some of the, some of it, um, depending on how that's going to end up working out. Um, but then hopefully 
even if the videos are just me, she'll be here for the lives. The lives. So. Okay. I think one of the things too is that, sorry, this goes back to, because the comment that said that they were surprised we didn't have more views. Mm -hmm. And I think that actually is largely because YouTube isn't putting out there because we can actually see how many people they, I don't know if this is common knowledge or not, but um, we can see how many people YouTube puts our stuff out to. And sometimes they put it out to a lot of people. And then other times they only put it out to like six. Yeah. <laughs> but even when like they Thursday. do, we'll have like an 100% <laughs> click rate or whatever if they only do it. So it's like, well, then why aren't you like just putting it out to more people? Because if you put it out to more people, then more people would watch. But yeah, yeah so I don't know. Well, it's it's, so the algorithm is such like a... It's so weird because for my histories, I have like for the tags that I do for for my histories, which like the tags aren't seen, but the tags that I that I use for my my daily history videos are the same. They're exactly the same, except for usually depending on what the video is about, I'll add in a few extra details about that video specifically. So Thursday, they showed my video to I think eight people and six <laughs> people watched it over like from Oops. then till today. But then the next day. I had a couple hundred views within like the first 30 minutes. And it was, yeah, I just, it, doesn't I, it, it doesn't make sense to me sometimes because most of the tags are exactly the same every day. So, and the title is basically the same with just some slight changes. So I'm not really sure why YouTube occasionally does not, because most of them, they do a pretty good job of showing. And then if it's a disinteresting video to some people, like the, the views reflect that, which makes sense. But some of the, like things are, are so so odd every once in a while yeah long. and then like because um like i i consume a lot of the content regarding um use like you know the from analytics. like video vid iq and stuff like how to work the algorithm blah 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 and it's like and it's constantly changing and so like ultimately like i get that there is a way to trick the algorithm into making you like super famous or whatever but at the end of the day too like i don't want to put out anything that i would not click on myself right like i don't want to put something out that's just gonna sound like clickbaity or um you know we try not to be clickbaity yeah or let that's like insincere right like you know when because there's this whole like thing like with how you design your your thumbnails and then your titles and how your thumbnails and the writing on your thumbnails matches or corresponds with your title and like there's like all of this stuff and it's there's so much like to know but then at the end of the day it's like you got to do what is um <laughs> you gotta be true to your heart yeah Sorry. <laughs> that's a great song <laughs> you, you have to do what that's works for you right because right? like i don't want to come across as like cheesy and disingenuous so well i think too it's part of that is that helps build longer term subscribers because people like the real stuff especially like there's times where there will be something where it's like you won't believe yeah. whatever and it's like oh really and i click on it and i'm <laughs> See, just like i believe he that. falls for it though i don't like i'm just like really what like, there's this thing in the, <laughs> there's this thing in my brain that every time is like well maybe this one's telling the truth like i don't know it's <laughs> So it's, it's hard for me sometimes when coming up with the title because I don't ever want to be like, you won't believe. And then yeah. them listen and be like, what is this? Well, like, yeah, you, you know, have, like, and this is the thing, too, because like when I was first trying to like sort through all of this stuff, I would I would use I would test it. Right. Like I would use the vidIQ, um, you know, whatever the AI titles yeah. versus, you know, one that I came up with myself. And generally speaking, the ones that we just came up with, you know, By on our own actually better. performed better than the ones that the AI said would. And I think, too, it's probably also very unique to the different niches, right? Like, I think, you know, there's not like a, a, a whole lot of um, users, not users, uh, creators out there doing... Um, like music review stuff, like in the grand scheme of things, like obviously there are a lot, but I mean, in the grand scheme of things. So it's, I think maybe because of that, it's a little bit under, um, it's, it's it, the AI doesn't cater to it, right? And so these programs don't really cater for the type of viewers that'll be watching these things. So it's, I think a lot of it, it, it really is just trial and error. Like you can do everything right. And a lot of the times, like when I was first trying to help him 
with the algorithm, Good all night, of this stuff. Gang. Oh, thanks for joining thanks us. Thanks for joining us. But yeah, when I was first trying to like do it, I would try to do everything perfect and it just like nothing was working. So yeah. I was like, meh, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do, you know, I guess the, the important stuff, right? Like the, you know, the tags and whatever, but ultimately just wanted to keep it, you know, us. Yeah. Real. That's true. Yeah. Oh, we're coming up, coming up on an hour. What? Uh, oh wow! <laughs> it's been a, it's been a good time. This yeah. has been a really good conversation. Yeah. Um, coming up on an hour, I'm thinking probably at eleven o'clock we'll probably go ahead and Peace wrap, wrap yeah. up. We're still kind of figuring out the time frame because we're not sure when when it comes to the lives. We're not sure yet if we should have a set time and stick to it, or if we should. Um, yeah, the streams are planning to be weekly. So the the plan going forward, we weren't sure what day would be best, but Saturday nights um, are the days that we're both home um, at the same time regular on a regular basis. So yeah, so we're gonna be doing them weekly. Um, the we're gonna release the video. Our videos are gonna be like our our full length videos will be released Saturday night, um, and then we're planning on doing lives um, at ten o'clock. Um, so that way we also as right now we're in ontario but uh, if we start getting subscribers and people watching from the west yeah, coast west, coast, west yeah. coast as well we want to make sure that it's that hard kind of balance because it's it's so late on this coast but then it's so early there so it's yeah. 10 o'clock is what we're going to do for now so um but on saturday yeah every saturday night is is the plan right now yeah i thought an hour was like i actually didn't think we would make it to an hour <laughs> Like that was kind of like my initial like, oh, well, yeah, maybe eventually we could work it up to an hour. But I figured like, you know, maybe 15, 30 minutes. But no, it's it's been well, it's been going well. Last week originally, before we we weren't sure if anybody was gonna show up, right? So we're just like, okay, we'll go on. And if after 10 minutes nobody's there, then we'll just sign off or whatever. <laughs> we'll just sit in silence. But you showed up yeah. car life, which was awesome and we appreciate it. And then and the hamburger man came last week. And so we actually had somebody show up and it's it's been a lot of fun. So then coming back this week, you said you were gonna be here, which was awesome. So we were we were super excited for that. And I was just like, Do you think do you think they're gonna show up? <laughs> and you did, which is awesome. So we really appreciate that. Yeah. So um <laughs> yeah, it's true. So um yeah, so we're gonna go for uh we're we'll be doing every Sunday night um is is the is the current current rate of plan yeah. so and then yeah then the histories every day will be released every morning um i had i had initially done them at nine o'clock was the original release time that i would do and that was 9 a.m every day and then i i tried a couple other time releases and they, they didn't seem to work 9 a.m seems to be the best time um because there are so, they get some views in the morning from the people i guess getting ready uh for their day and then usually the majority of people um, watch those in the evening time, it seems. Um, but when I had tried doing later release dates, like release times for those, actually, I actually had people be like, well, why aren't you, <laughs> yeah. where's the today's Where history? And I'm waiting for my morning, my history. morning paper. So the, um, yeah, so we release those every day at nine. So that right now are the things that we have set in stone is every day we have the 9 a.m. history, um, Saturday night video release, and then, and then live. So that is going to be our kind of rhythm and, and schedule. I think the now. cool thing too is, is that because the majority of our audience is people like our age and older, it's easier to like work out, I guess, schedules and stuff that way. Like, I mean, cause like we can see it all in the metrics too, but yeah. it's, you know, it, it's, it's nice that way. Like, you know, if, if the audience was largely young kids, it'd be like, Oh, well, that would be a little trickier. <laughs> Oh, thank you. That's so cool. Like, cause it's, it's not the, the shorts are really fun. I, I appreciate, I appreciate that. It's very kind of you. Um, I, I really like the shorts because it, it also kind of get, gets my feet wet in certain pieces of, of music history that I didn't know about. So even if it's something that I don't necessarily post about in the history, um, I, there's all, so many different pieces of history that I come across that are, that are so cool. Um, and, um, Inconsistent history. Yeah, the consistency too. is good. Thank you. Yeah, the that was kind of something that we that Stephanie was very good by about uh, getting me to do. She says you got to be consistent, which has really been really been helpful. So, but uh, like some people say, oh, daily shorts didn't miss most days. 
Yeah, I, initially I was having a hard time. Like for the first few, I would I I was doing them like every other day, every few days, um, because I was having a hard time kind of getting that rhythm. And then um, once I kind of figured it out, and the challenge too is the challenge with the histories isn't even the recording piece. It's actually writing things in my own words because if you check the different sites it's almost like they took wikipedia and copy and pasted it into <laughs> the sites like <laughs> everywhere but then and also so, fact checking all of that yeah stuff so the fact checking so initially there were a few sites that i was going to where i would check for histories and then there were a couple that i've stopped looking at because nine times out of ten their histories were wrong <laughs> like once i looked into it but even still there's certain details that i come across where i'm just like there's certain histories that i won't release on as a on this day in music history piece um purely because um sometimes it's like oh yeah this happened this year and this month but the day isn't always specific mm -hmm. so those ones i have a harder I like i have a hard time saying okay i'm gonna release this as a on this day in history kind of thing. I think the easiest ones to fact check are all the Beatles ones. Oh. And like they have facts for like every single day of the year. Too. Beatles, Beatles are the <laughs> easiest to fact check. There's, there's so much. Out there's there. even like official Beatles websites that you can check where it's just like, <laughs> like the other day. So, oh, this got me so bad. So the other day, uh, January 30th, um, that was a history where I did the Beatles and it had to do with the rooftop concert. I said that they did it on the rooftop of uh, Abbey Road Studios, and that was not correct. <laughs> it was um, on their Apple Core, uh, well, Apple Corporation rooftop. It and was so, or was it the other way around? No, that's because, okay. yeah. So I ended up, somebody had commented and let me know that. And I was just like, oh, no, I got the, how did I miss that detail? So I went and I actually did a second video in correction of it. So because uh, thankfully that person pointed that out to me because I just, when I when I get those things wrong, it's so frustrating because I I meticulously fact check yeah. every detail, and if they don't line up, I don't do it. <laughs> so, well, and then there's times too, because there was that one time where you it was just like a a slip of the word type of thing. I can't remember. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, I knew that, and the, I said it wrong for Johnny Rotten's birthday. I um in the video that I didn't release, I, I fixed it before I released it. I had said pop punk on accident instead of punk rock. And they are, they are not pop <laughs> punk. Not the they are not the same. So um, I had to fix that before releasing it. So, but, but uh, yeah. So thank you. I appreciate, I appreciate that. So yeah, I think, I think, yeah, we're an hour in, so let's, we're going to go ahead and wrap up. Um, Thanks for coming back again, Car Life. Yep. I see somebody somebody else has joined us. So you can if, say you're, hi, if you're if you're watching, you like. yeah, you can say hi. We are gonna bounce out, but um, we will be back next week. Um, so next Saturday night, 10 p.m. Eastern. Same time, place. Same time, same place. Same people. These lovely faces. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, anyway, so thanks for joining us this week, and uh, we'll we'll hopefully see you next week. And we hope you have a good week. See ya. See you later. I just gotta figure out how to end this. You hit that button. That button. Oh, oh. We hope so. Thanks for coming. <laughs> See ya.